So I'm joined uh, here today by Richard Nevidson, the Group Manager at the Information Com Commissioner's Office. Thank you very much, Richard, for joining us today. Um, I'm sure it's a very busy time at the ICO at the moment. Indeed, indeed. Um, I think it's all, 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 all systems go for, uh, for the 25th of May. Absolutely. So with GDPR coming into force essentially tomorrow, can you just briefly recap for us what are the, the key changes that GDPR is going to, to affect in the everyday way that data is collected and used? Uh, yes, certainly. Well, one of the main drivers behind um, the development of, of, of the GDPR was, was, was clearly this intention to um, provide individuals with, with greater control um, over, over the ways in which their personal data is used. Um, and as part of that, the GDPR places much more of an emphasis on transparency. It's always been implicit within uh, the Data Protection Act and, and the 1995 uh, European Directive, um, but we see much more of a focus uh, on transparency in, uh, in, in, in the GDPR. Um, and essentially, this, this, this is going to require organisations to be much clearer about the, the, the ways in which they use pe people's personal data and to be more upfront with them uh, when they collect that data. And this should fit in with the, the accountability principles. So we, we see this as a you know a potential driver, a commercial incentive uh, for organisations to, to be far clearer about about why they're collecting personal data, the ways they're using it, how long how long they hold it, uh, and the control that that can, individuals can have over that data. Mm -hmm. And do you think companies are, are understanding this accountability and transparency principles in GDPR? I think tr transparency is something that, that we've, we've, we've long since ad advocated. So we, we, we would hope that, that, that companies are familiar with that, certainly you know, at the very basic level in terms of the, the, their privacy policies. Uh, I think what we're seeing much more of it is, is that companies are looking, or, or those, those that, that want to adhere to best practice, are looking at being far clearer about what they do throughout the process. So this is not just about telling people what you do when you collect their data, but 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 making it an ongoing process so, so individuals have constant access to information about the ways in which you're processing their personal data. Um, accountability is probably something that's more new, um, but again, we, we, we've always encouraged organisations to, to demonstrate how, how they're complying with, with data protection legislation. It's not, not a case of just making an assumption um, that, that what you do is, is, is compliant. So I think the more transparent you are, uh, that will help help to uh, to meet that accountability principle. Mm -hmm. And there's been quite a lot of information, especially in recent months, about GDPR. Um, but do you still think there's a lot of myths or half tr half truths about uh, GDPR that are out there? There are, and as as, as you've probably seen um, over, over the past year or so, uh, the commission has published a series of myth-busting blogs um, and I think one, one of the most important one of those was, was around regulatory action uh, and we think perhaps there's been too much of a focus on on avoidance of, of regulatory action and not enough attention on protecting and respecting the rights of in, in individuals. Um, that really is what, what data protection is about at, 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 at its core. Um, so while fines have always been a, a, a tool, um, the Commission has been quite clear that you know, they have been and they'll continue to be a last resort of, of regulatory action. Um, and we think that organisations, as I said, need to focus far more on, on the rights of the individual and perhaps the reputational damage that can occur um, if they fail to get it right, fail to comply with, with the legislation. Right, and I think the, the Information Commissioner talked about there's a, a quite a range of, of different regulatory actions that the ICO could take. There are, and, and, and there have, have been under the Data Protection Act. So obviously we, we have... Um, w Organisations may first go through through a formal a formal complaints process. At which point we'd we'd come to a a, a conclusion as to whether we thought something was likely to comply um, with 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 the legislation or not. Uh, we have tools such as undertakings, enforcement notices, so we, we can re require organisations to to do things or to stop doing things before we get to that point um, of, of of using monetary penalties. But of course, they are there to act as a deterrent. Um, the GDPR significantly raises. Uh, the maximum fining powers, um, and, and that, that that should act, as I say, as, as, a, as a deterrent to non-compliance. Yeah, and we've obviously heard about the, the fact that GDPR is, is somewhat global. So any companies, uh, wherever in the world they are based, who are dealing with data um, from people in the EU will have to comply. Mm. 
But why would a company, let's say, based somewhere outside the EU, that's maybe only dealing with a minimal amount of, of data from European residents, why would they bother to comply? Mm -hmm. Well, again, I mean, the, 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 the basic answer is it, 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 it's obviously the, the law. But if, if, if that organisation wants to continue operating in Europe or, or, or drumming up business from EU customers, there's a clear incentive for them to uh, to comply with with the regulation. There's, there's reputational issues, as say, as well as well as potential um, financial issues at play. Um, if, if if they fail to comply, there are still those risks of sanctions. The GD GDPR um, is clear that those organisations that aren't ba based in the EU but process the data of EU citizens are, are subject to the requirements of, 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 the, uh, of the regulation. And obviously we'll be working with, with our counterparts um, in other data protection authorities in Europe and beyond to ensure that those kind of organisations can comply. So, um, from the 5th of May, if a company has just woken up to, to GDPR, what do they need to, to get done right away to make sure they, they've got their compliance in order? Okay, well, firstly, we would hope that wouldn't be the case. Um, you know, those companies that, that are subject to the requirements of, of the GDPR will, in, in the vast majority of cases, already be subject to the requirements of, of the Data Protection Act 1998. So we would hope that there would, there would be some awareness of data protection legislation that they hadn't left it that, that late. But in, in, a, in a hypothetical scenario, I think the focus initially, from our view, would perhaps need to be on transparency. Um, without that transparency, everything else falls down. So, for example, individuals wouldn't have control uh, over their personal data or awareness of what's being done with it. Um, they wouldn't have the ability to exercise their rights. And as I've said, you know, individuals' rights are, are really at the, at the core of data protection legislation. Um, and without that, everything else falls down. Mm -hmm. And for companies that have been working for quite a long time to, to get compliant, um, post-GDPR, is there a shift from basic compliance to best practice? We would hope to see that. Um, we've certainly seen that, that in, under the previous Data Protection Act re regime. Um, I think a lot of companies are recognizing that, that you know, best practice in data protection can can give them a bit of a competitive advantage. Ultimately, it helps to build consumer trust and confidence. Um, so we, we see a lot of positives in that, and we would hope um, companies that are subject to the requirements of the regulation uh, see, see benefit as well. Um, it's obviously principles-based, so, so there are a number of ways in which you can, can achieve compliance. Uh, and, and, and we would hope that companies aren't just looking at doing the bare minimum. And again, this all fits in with that accountability principle of, of demonstrating how you comply with the regulation. Mm -hmm. I think if as a company you can dem demonstrate that you're, you're going above and beyond and seeking to develop and, and adhere to best practice, that, that's only going to benefit you in the long term. Yeah. And for UK companies, though, will the data protection bill that's currently working its way through Parliament, will that be... The, the, the key piece of legislation that UK companies will need to pay attention to? Not necessarily. I think the, the, the GDPR of, of obviously forms the foundations of, of data protection law, but the, but the, the, the data protection bill and, and you know, eventually the data, new data protection act is, is going to, um, to form an important part of, of, of the overall legislative framework work within the, within which they need to, to, to operate. So obviously we will look at things like additional processing conditions, exemptions, um, but I think at, at the moment obviously those organizations that are affected by it need to look at it, but the, but the focus needs to be on, on, on what we have in place already, the GDPR which really, really you'd say provides that foundation. So essentially if you're complying with GDPR you more than likely will be complying with uh, the new Data Protection Act? I, I I don't think we can go as, as, as far, far to say that. Obviously, what, 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 what the Act does is, is bring in a number of, of, of derogations, um, so, so it, it essentially expands on things that are, that are within, um, within in the GDPR. But in terms of the core principles, those are set out in the GDPR itself, um, and that's probably where, you know, alongside the transparency principle, the accountability principle, which, which I've already mentioned, that's, that, that's where a business really need, needs to start and then move on to, 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 the, to those other specific issues, such as processing conditions, particularly around um, processing of sensitive or special category personal data. Mm -hmm. And do you think, just as a final point, do you think that um, organizations, we've had a lot of questions in from organizations around conditions for processing, making sure that they're getting those things right. 
communicating that in a privacy notice, talking to people about how you're protecting their data, that's that's the fundamental part of GDPR, is that correct? It is, and, that, and that's, that's, a, that's a new requirement. So un, under, under the... Um, the Data Protection Act, you've always been required to have a, have a, a condition for processing and, a, and an additional condition where you process sensitive personal data. What GDPR does is, is require organizations to articulate that to individuals as part of their privacy policy. Now, that can be tricky in, 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 in some circumstances. Individuals are, are far more likely to understand the concept of consent than they are legitimate interests, for, for example. So. What organizations need to do is look at how they can explain that to people in, in, in clear, plain language that doesn't confuse them and give them the information they need about how and why their personal data is being processed. That's great, Richard. Thank you so much for, for your time. We really appreciate it today. I know it's a very busy time at the ICO, but thank you so much for your insights. No problem. No problem. Thank you very much.